this clip is funny, right? Because I'm still. Huh. This is quite an old clip to give it a bit of context. This is quite an old clip of Matt Rife on Tanner Mogo's podcast, right? And I have to be honest, I don't know who said it. I think it's maybe it's Uche. I'm not going to put Uche's. Is it Uche? It might have been Uche. It might be quite. I don't know who it was in the chat. But somebody said, unironically, that Tanner Mogo's podcast is actually quite fun to listen to. Like, it's just like a thing. You just want to turn your brain up and just listen to it. I'm actually like, watching it because it kind of, you know, just to kind of mix it up a little bit. It's kind of might maybe interesting to watch. I'm not going to lie. But I'm surprised at how sharp she is. I'm not going to lie. I thought she was a bit of a dummy. But I'm surprised at how sharp she is when she kind of claps back at fucking Matt Rife in this exchange. And again, to give it some context, this clip is a bit old. But it's still perplexing that this is the mindset a lot of like comedians have when it comes to receiving hate online. Um, I don't know if it's an LA thing. I don't know if it's a. I don't know if it's an LA thing, a Hollywood entertainment industry thing. I don't know if it's just what happens when you become really successful in a very short space of time, regardless of your age. But this is a weird way to process when people don't like what you do, right? Really strange way. Listen to this. Please listen to this. That's the thing. I don't really hate anybody. Some- I don't. Here's here's a very humbling experience that I've. Uh, sorry, I guess epiphany that I've had recently, and that because so many fucking people hate me for really no reason, mm. and it really made me realize that like people only hate somebody they're jealous of. And I've been I've been guilty of hating people. And when I really sat back and thought about it, it was because I was jealous of where that person was in their life. I felt like maybe they got an opportunity that I should have gotten. That was yeah. a really really good well rounded answer. I'm trying to wrap my Thank head you. around. Do you think people who hate Osama bin Laden are jealous of him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like, what a weird way to process fucking hate. Everybody that's, je- everybody that's jealous of me, everybody that hates me is just jealous of me. Now, if you're looking at that con- that comment, literally, you would say, okay, fair enough. There, I'm sure there are some people out there that wish they looked like Matt Rife, that wish they looked, they had their physique, they had their skin color, they had his success, whatever. I'm sure those people actually exist. They do. Fair enough. But this idea that people can watch your content, watch you on social media, see what, hear what you say, read what you say, and then think, you know what, not for me. And then for you to interpret it as they don't like you personally because of your success only, is such a bizarre way to kind of look at things. But again, it's no surprise Because this is definitely something I've heard Tom Segura say. So I'm wondering if this is the consequence of him hanging out with Tom Segura. Because for some reason, and I think it's it's not not some reason, it's obvious why it happened. Because obviously he's a young dude coming up in the scene and he's obviously stars ascending. Tom has really latched on to Matt Rife and become like his weird kind of, um, you know, mentor or something, right? And Tom has this idea in his head that, people only dislike him because he makes a lot of money and shit as opposed to like hey why not why don't people just not like you anymore because they think you're not as funny as you once was or whatever it may be right why is it always a thing about people just don't like you because of your money and success and ticket sales it's such a weird way to kind of process and to kind of make sense of the feedback you're getting that isn't great but i think it's a it's a thing that kind of plagues a lot of content creators online there's this inability to kind of understand how the internet works and i think really and truly the internet is like it's it's kind of um it's it kind of is without sense and without reason shit just happens in a vacuum because it just happens in a vacuum but usually if people smell blood that's it really so the moment they realize that things affect you and things get to you they're gonna keep doubling down on it they're gonna keep running with narratives they're gonna keep pushing your buttons just to get a reaction out of you because why the fuck not i said it plenty of times on the stream sometimes like it's fun to just point and laugh at these guys because they take themselves too seriously they actually think they're changing the world with their fucking ridiculous stand-up and you're here thinking hold on like you actually have real issues in your life you have real drama real problems real struggles real strife and you're not online fucking crying and complaining every single day or even if you are nobody fucking cares and it's not really that deep but if you can point and laugh at people who have much more than you (laughs) i think that's a fair deal if somebody sat you down right now and said hey i'm gonna give you the ability to be incredibly successful in your area of expertise 
you're going to get a booming social media platform. The kind of platform where you post one pic and it gets a 10,000 fucking likes. You post a video, you get 100,000 views. You have fucking ads coming out of your fucking ass, right? You have fucking people throwing themselves at you, whatever you're interested in, men, women, or in between. And the only thing you have to fucking, you know, take, give, the only thing you have to do in exchange is maybe put up with some hate. Put up with people like me talking about you. Maybe put up with some mean comments in your in mean, you know, trolley comments in your fucking replies. I think that's a decent deal, really. You get to do what you want, live a life of luxury, but from time to time, you might get the odd hate comment here and there. Is that really that big of a deal? And if you are that sensitive and it does hurt your feelings, you can always just block people. You could always just turn off your comments. It's not really that deep, really. It's not like things where it's literally going to affect you in the real world. It doesn't. Even if it does affect you in the real world, so what? <laughs> you know what I mean? You got out of the fucking rat race. You escaped the fucking livelihood that most of us have to fucking succumb to and accept. Like, you've won. You know what I mean? You, like, you've basically won. You can provide for your children. You can support your family. You can look after your partner. Da, 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 da. Like, you can do all the things that you want to do with fucking ease and you're crying and complaining because people don't think your stand-up is funny. It's so interesting. It really is. Even more so with um, this guy. Because he's quite young. So you'd think he'd understand the internet more, right? He'd be a little bit more in tune with how it works and whatnot. And the re reacting the way that he has has been odd, especially when you think about he's been purposely trying to get a little bit of hate to get some traction for his special and shit, which, is, which has had the adverse effect. Have you noticed that? Have you, have you noticed that? Him trying to trigger people with his special and goad people into reacting to it has actually had the adverse effect because people have watched you special and realized he's actually shit. <laughs> you know? That's what they realized. They realized that he's actually terrible and it's actually made his, you know, his star, he's like his star, um, you know, dim a little bit, which is obviously unfortunate. But I'm just hoping it's just like a young guy thing. He's kind of going through that weird change because I think he did mention it in one pod that, he actually went through a period where he wasn't selling any tickets, right? He was like doing shows for like 10 people and stuff, right? And this has kind of happened, I won't say overnight, but it's happened, you know, pretty relatively in a short space of time. So I'm hoping this is just him going through his like weird phase where he's just maybe getting used to the fame and stuff and the money and the success and he might settle out a bit because come on, bro. Like you have to relax a bit. You know what I mean? You have to relax. You have to relax. You have to relax. You really do. And I don't know, I think even if I was a stand-up, I honestly do think I would be somewhat objective about what I do because I think there's a lane for everybody, right? The moment I saw Brendan selling out certain places when he first started, that's when I realized, okay, cool. Stand-up is quite objective. So it's quite subjective. The things that people like, you might not like. But there's also different lanes, right? There's guys that do puppets, puppet comedy and stuff, right? There's guys that fucking do comedy to pianos and whatnot, or whatever it may be. So everybody's brand of comedy and what they find funny is different. If I'm Matt Rife, I know what lane I'm in. Be happy with that lane and just double down, bruv. Service your community. This whole thing of him trying to piss off mums and not have girls turn up to his show is so odd. It's such a weird thing. If anything, I'd be doubling down on it. If anything, he's the one that should be going on stage without, without a fucking t-shirt. Not fucking Burt Kreischer. He should be fucking going on stage without a t-shirt. That's what I would do. I'd fucking double down on that shit. I'd, I'd fucking zip line in with my body all fucking, you know, covered in fucking olive oil and gyrating on the fucking stage mic and shit. That's what I'd be doing. Double down on your fucking fans and give them what they fucking want as opposed to trying to be like a real comic and shit. Like, it's odd. It's odd what he's doing at the moment, to be fair. It really is. Um... But yeah, what can you do? Maybe it's just a young guy thing. Hopefully he figures it out in the end because I think there is still something all right there. You know, there's a there's a there's embers of a do, of a good dude if that makes sense. So hopefully he figures it out. And because I think my my um my appreciation for him is just more so because he's one of the only people that I've seen so far in all my time watching GRV versus Bapa versus content who hasn't made it via Rogan like legitimately and didn't have to go kiss the ring to make it for him and that 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 deserves a lot of credit it really does because a lot of these guys and women are incredibly embarrassing when it comes to rogan right they will literally give up their own children right they will miss fucking weddings funerals of their family members to go and fucking sit across the table from fucking rogan and they do anything to kind of get his blessing so the fact that he made it all in his own without having to kiss the ring really does 
um, or give, give up his fucking pussy. He really does deserve a little bit of um, acknowledgement in that respect. So I'm hoping he settles down and figures it out because, you know, Matt Raff is wiling right now. He's fucking wiling. He needs to fucking take a deep breath and relax. Stop hanging around with Tom Segura. Get some of your own age mates, right? Like, enjoy life. Maybe do some fucking IRL streams with Sneaker and shit. Chill out, enjoy yourself, and go from there. Please, for the love of God. For the fucking love of God.